a very warm welcome to Pro Hearings. Kurt Pudge, CEO of uh, Beowulf. Uh, here's your remote. Thanks very much. And, and there's, there's my the cross, cross to stand on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, there are some technical terms in this presentation which uh, may not make any sense, but I promise that we will go through the presentation and uh, put a glossary of uh, Swedish uh, words against the translate to technical terms into Swedish so that hopefully you get a better understanding and that will go on to our website. Apologize also for the disclaimer. It seems that the longer I'm with Beowulf, the longer the disclaimer gets and the smaller the font and we never read it anyway, so I bring it to your attention. I've been with the company for six years now as CEO and uh, this just seems to get longer and longer. An introduction to the company if you don't already know it. We are an exploration development company. We are operating now in three different countries. Uh, we have three different businesses and we cover off a range of commodities. So we're a diversified exploration and development company. We've been listed in Sweden since 2008 and even though you're listening to a British CEO, what's often not known about the company is that we're over 67% owned by Swedish shareholders. Our listing in Sweden uh, followed our listing in London in 2005 and, and really we have always placed great importance on, on having our, London, our listing which was on Acti Torget and now is on Spotlight and the value of our Nordic shareholder base. The three distinct business areas, what we're most known for is our Kallak asset, which is a magnetite uh, iron ore asset north of the Arctic Circle, close to Jokmok in the county of Norbotten, and that's where I spend most of my time when I'm not in Stockholm. Um, that project has been in development now since for uh, 14 years. The first exploration license was granted in 2006. It's a large-scale mining asset. Um, what makes it stand out is its we can produce a market-leading magnetite concentrate of 71.5% iron content, which is awfully very clean as well. And, and that's particularly suited as a high feed material for uh, steel making and, and, as you've probably seen in the headlines recently, fossil-free steel making with projects like Qubrit um, starting up. In Finland, we have Fenniscandian resources. Fenniscandian has been in the graphite exploration business for a number of years. Uh, we have a defined resource at our Otolampi project and our focus there is very much on building a production base of natural flake graphite which then gets converted into anode material which goes into lithium ion batteries for which the demand scenario um, is increasing rapidly. And then since 2018 We've, we've been involved in Kosovo. We invested in a company called Vardar Minerals. We own 46% of that company. And really that is our grassroots greenfield exploration opportunity. But Kosovo is in a very interesting geological belt, the Tethian belt. Um, other countries in the Balkans have, have uh, experienced a, a much higher degree of exploration. Kosovo is, is the next one on the list of countries to visit. Uh, and we are somewhat of a first mover there. So it's very exciting in terms of a potential supply of uh, metals in the future. We often talk about Beowulf in the context of sustainable development and sustainability. What that means for us is that we're actually thinking about the full life, life cycle of a mining project and beyond. So when I'm up in Jokmok, and I've been going to Jokmok for six years, we're thinking about the development of a smart mining operation and at the same time the development of a smart expansion of the town and we're thinking about the kind of business opportunities that we can create off the back of a mine that will live beyond mining. So it's a very exciting vision. It's uh, one that you know we, we've been discussing with the municipality and uh, local landowners and local entrepreneurs over a number of years and really I believe you know projects like Calac the time is now for their development. So Jokmok Iron Mines is our local subsidiary in Sweden that holds the license for Kallak. As I've said, we've been, our first exploration license was granted in 2006. It's quite a long timeline, same with drug development when you're developing a mining asset. Um, we've been developing Kallak for 14 years. Um, in the last 
five or six years, we've had some hiccups with uh, permitting and getting an exploitation concession. But the technical work that has uh, developed the, the resource that we have there, which is over 150 million tonnes defined resource, but then an exploration target of 100 million tonnes as well of uh, iron ore, has given us the, the confidence that this is a large-scale mining project perfectly situated in the county of Norbotten, and I'll come on to that. The asset itself could support a mine life of up to 25 years. Our original application, uh, uh, which was submitted in uh, April 2013, is for a 14-year mine life, but that was only the Calac North asset. What you have, what you have here, I get make sure I get the point in the right way. I won't use the pointer. You can see the Calic North to the south, to the to the north. Um, that was our original application that supported a 14-year mine life. But we have the Calic South asset to the that you can see there as well, with an exploration target of 100 million tonnes, which will support this 25-year mine life project. And then further south, we have the Parky Yarra No. 6 exploration licence, which is an opportunity for us to further expand the resource and the life of mine and the potential for a much longer life operation, which can support economic development in Yotmok. The picture in Norbotten, as far as we can see, is a very exciting one because you have all the um, elements that you need to create a sustainable mining business, renewable power, um, infrastructure, both the Inlands Barnum, the Malm Barnum, which isn't shown there, the port of Lulio, the port of Sheleftio further south. And you also have uh, real innovation taking place in, in the county. Lulio Technical University is, is uh, we have an ongoing discussion with them about what projects we can do around Calac and then exciting new developments such as Hubrit and this transition from traditional steelmaking to fossil free steelmaking which demands high quality feed raw materials. There have been times over the last six years where I've been wondering why I'm actually working in Sweden because we have faced some real challenges but this, this is a country, if you're going to build a, mine, a sustainable mining business, this is the country to do it in. It has everything you possibly could want. And, and when we think about the, the thinking that goes on in the industry, these are, these are some of the documents that exist about forward thinking about how the mining industry should behave and should be operated going forward. So it's an exciting time. And I particularly like the resources for Europe because that supports exactly the direction that we are taking Calac in, both to su support steelmaking within Sweden and fossil-free steelmaking, but also um, as being a Nordic producer of be it iron ore or graphite going into both Nordic uh, markets and also European markets. We also believe that Calac is really a blueprint for how mining should be done in the future. We don't have a legacy situation such as you do with other mining companies where you've got assets that have been around for many, many years. Um, you have constraints. We don't have any constraints in how we think about the solutions that we integrate into what we describe as a, a sustainable mining operation going forward. And it's all happening. Uh, we have the opportunity to collaborate with Swedish Mining Innovation. You have projects like Hubrit taking off now. We have... Um, thought processes going around sustainable development and also circular economy. So it's all happening in Sweden. This is a very exciting time to be considering a project like Calac. And in the context of that, we still remain optimistic that we will get a, an exploitation concession to be able to take this project forward. So coming on to Fenerskandian resources, we acquired Fenerskandian in 2006. We're 100 percent owner of the business. The founder, Rasmus Blunkvist, um, is our exploration manager, and he runs all our exploration programs in the Nordic region. Our focus here is very much to, to tap into the enthusiasm and excitement around uh, battery minerals and metals, uh, the growth in electric vehicles, and also batteries for renewable storage. And we have four key areas that we're focusing on. You know, like any mining company, we start with the resource in the ground, and that's our Italampi project. So we build our production base. We're then looking at how we establish a processing hub, and we're considering where, how, who we can collaborate to, to basically optimize that, that kind of facility. 
we're very big on collaboration and strategic uh, alliances. We don't want to reinvent the wheel ourselves all the time. And there's great thinking both in, in this country and in Finland as to how you can develop uh, robust supply chains. And then finally, um, as well as trying to extract raw materials out of the ground because there isn't enough uh, material within the circular economy to, to be able to basically satisfy society's needs for different applications in the future. Um, but we are looking at alternative sources of supply that don't rely on mining. This is the picture that we see and this is the reason we're in the graphite business and focusing primarily on the um, high value applications for lithium ion batteries. Uh, there's a great focus on uh, the transparency where we get our metals and minerals from. Um, that, 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 that discussion is taking place in Sweden at the moment and I think people are thinking more about where, does the, where do all the metals that are in my mobile telephone or my laptop, where do they actually come from? Do I have a clear conscience about the source of those? I, I think it's great to be operating in a country like this that has the highest standards of environmental and uh, health, health, safety and welfare. And, uh, and, and, and so therefore when you're talking about metals and minerals that go into batteries, the, the, the Nordic region is very well endowed with these minerals and metals. And the growth scenario going forward is, is incredible. Uh, and even if we get a small proportion of that, we're in a very good position, both in, to satisfy Nordic markets and also European markets. So moving on to the project itself. Italampia has been in development for about three years now. We have done the resource development work, so we have our initial uh, resource in the ground. We actually have a high grade portion of that, which is over 11 million tons at a 5.7% total graphitic content, com um, content which uh, gives you about six, over 600,000 uh, tons contained graphite. What we focus on is, as well as the resource development work, we've also focused on metallurgical test work very on, what we can apply, what products we can produce, what markets we can serve, lithium ion batteries being one of them. And in specifically for lithium ion batteries, we've then gone further in doing the specific test for that market, um, purification, spheroidization, and battery tests themselves. So this business is in a very good position and there are some interesting conversations taking place in Finland on how we build our capability. And this is the picture again uh, supporting the demand outlook. The timeline at the bottom there is an ambitious timeline. What you have is uh, a mismatch in terms of, as you saw from the demand for anode material and the demand for natural uh, flake graphite concentrate. Um, against the way mining projects typically get permitted in the Nordic region. As you saw, it's 14 years since we started CALAC and we still haven't got our exploitation concession. So if, if society wants transparent security of supply, uh, transparent supply, they want to know where the minerals and metals are coming from and they want security of supply and reliability, then you've got to synchronize the permitting and the market demand opportunities so you don't get the classic situation which happens in commodities about cyclical pricing and peaks and troughs. But this is all doable if there's joined up thinking uh, and uh, a way of uh, ensuring that the work that's submitted for an application process is the work that's expected by a permitting authority and if you tick all the boxes you get your permit. So moving on to Vardar. Vodar, from our perspective, is is very exciting ex exploration opportunity. You may think that, uh, and sometimes when I'm uh, speaking at events such as this, I'm uh, going up against uh, other mining companies that are single project companies, maybe in a single commodity, whereas with Beowulf you have three distinct business areas. The reason you have those is because they're fully resourced by highly competent uh, teams, and that's no different with Vodar. What was presented to us in 2018 um, by Vardar was a very uh, compelling business uh, case. Starting with two, two project licenses, Mitrovica and Viti. In a, the Tethian Belt, as I've just mentioned to you, which is a highly prolific region throughout southeastern Europe, um, 
you know, with, responsible for many of the major copper gold discoveries. And, uh, and so we backed this team in 2018 and 2019 we put a uh, significant amount of money in to help them fund both further exploration work but including drilling at Mitrovica. And what you can see on the right hand side is a photos that have taken in the last couple of weeks of the drone magnetic survey that they're running at the moment. So flying a, uh, the mag over the, the terrain with a drone which we're quite excited about. So this is the picture, the classic depiction cartoon of a porphyry system. And, and here you have all the key elements. What's, um, there's an existing mine outside of the property, which is point one. You also have all these different targets. And, and what is most exciting is the, the exploration model puts these targets together. So what we are not looking at is discrete opportunities. We're looking at this as a much larger mineralized system. So Mitrovica itself has four different targets. Wolf Mountain to the north, Madjam Peak in the center, and Mitrovica south. And then underlying this, as you saw from the previous slide, is what sits below and what is driving all of the uh, mineralization that we're finding in these different targets. There are two things that you see over and over again in, in these slides. Uh, one is the word Gossen. A Gossen is, a, um, is the oxidized part of an ore body or a vein that you see at surface. So it's an indication that you're looking at an area which has metal in it. If we just move on to Wolf Mountain, what we have at Wolf Mountain is a four kilometer long Gossen. Uh, last year, the Vardar team focused on uh, trenching and drilling. The trenching and drilling intercepted mineralization lead zinc of a combined grade up to 5%. And we've now got an area of interest which is 400 meters by 800 meters. This has all been flown with geophysics in the last uh, few weeks, uh, both the uh, magnetic work but also uh, IP work. And the results of that are being interpreted at the moment, uh, such that going into 2021, we will start to drill this target again. And what we're looking for is high-grade feeder structures, which are driving the mineralization that we are seeing at surface. Moving south to Madison Peak, this is a gold anomaly. It's, again, significant area, 1,400 meters long and 700 meters wide. The Vardar team has done extensive soil sampling, uh, grab sampling. This area is also being flown with uh, MAG at the moment, and uh, IP is taking place as well. And again, what we're hoping is we come up with the drill targets for this particular site as well. So very exciting. And it's, as you saw from the graph at the start, it's not a bad time to be looking at a gold exploration asset. Moving on Mitrovica South, uh, again, uh, an extensive soil anomaly, uh, lots of metals, um, less work than done on um, Wolf Mountain and Majan Peak, but again, it's our third target. And what we have sitting potentially underneath all of this is this uh, mineralized feeder system, which we, we need trying to uh, get a better picture of. And finally, Viti, which is our second license, which is in southeastern Kosovo. Again, here we have a three kilometer long Gossen. Uh, the company Vardar put two drill holes down last year. Um, both those drill holes intercepted uh, gold and copper mineralization, not for resource grade. Um, they were put down to understand the, uh, the direction of the geology and not specifically to hit any mineralization. But the other word that you will see through these slides if you take the time to look at them afterwards, is alteration, hydrothermal alteration. And uh, I'm not a geologist, I'm a mining engineer, but if you're with a group of geologists walking over this ground, they get very excited and, you know, to the extent that they're jumping up and down about how much alteration that they're seeing. And the alteration is an indication of uh, metals that are being introduced into the system. So finally, in summary, Again, the, the excitement we have about our business is that 
we believe now is the time when everything is coming together to, for projects such as CALAC, which has the capacity to generate iron, high quality iron ore that can feed projects such as Hubert or whatever happens after Hubert in terms of an expanded fossil free steel making industry in Sweden and in Europe. We have Fenniskandian, which is well positioned within Finland. Uh, we are receiving a lot of support from the government in Finland through the agency Business Finland, which is helping us build our capability in moving downstream. So we're not just selling a product at the gate of the mine. We're actually moving downstream in terms of how we can both service the lithium ion battery market, but also create other high value products and serve that growing demand in the, the battery market that you see happening as early as 2024. And that's only four years away. And then finally in Kosovo, that's the, uh, a very exciting piece. With, with our company, what you have in both Fenis and Kosovo is you see very little value or recognition by the market of those business areas. And the focus is always on Calac and when, when are we going to get our exploitation concession. But what you get with exploration is you get both those businesses have now, oh, Fenis particularly, a defined resource. With Kosovo, our focus is very much on can we, find a, can we make a discovery? And then after we've made the discovery of an ore body, can we move to defining a resource? And from there on is the, moving down the project development path, pathway. What we've seen in the Balkans is that companies are both developing mining projects, but they're also, uh, there's quite a lot of M&A activity. So what you find is if somebody finds a really interesting opportunity, then the, the prospect is uh, we've seen other examples where companies get taken out. So there's lots happening in that region. And an overall, our mindset about how we're developing our business and the blueprint of our business is all in the context of a climate emergency. You know, a green transition that's taking place within Europe and the Nordic region about the way businesses should be operated in the future or, or developed such that... Uh, we are part of the solution to some of the challenges that we're facing. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you, Beer Wolf Mining. Uh, exciting times. Um, if I start off with some questions. Uh, Okay, let's see if I got it right. You got iron ore in Sweden, graphite in Finland, and in Kosovo it's base metals, but also the very hot metals, gold and silver. Yes. Okay. If you were to, to uh, divide uh, the value of Beowulf to those three countries, I don't know if that's possible, but uh, uh, if, if you assign the value to according by uh, geography and country what about what would that be i think the market's view at the moment is that the market capitalization of beowulf is all calac so um that's so in terms of an investor buying in buying a beowulf share the it's my view that there's a free option for the upside that we create both it, with fenis gandian and in Kosovo with Vardar Minerals. So Fenis Gandian is getting to that very interesting point at the moment where you have the resource defined. We've been doing the test work and what I've challenged the team in Finland to do over the summer, because clearly we weren't doing exploration in the field, is to think about you know, establishing the business plan going forward and how we make it look more like a business and less like an exploration company. And uh, and so for us, and, and me specifically, it's now my job to better communicate that to the market about what we think the underlying value of Fenis Gandian is. Clearly, with uh, Vada Minerals in Kosovo, it's an early stage exploration play. We haven't made a discovery yet, but what we do have is very strong explorationary results which support further investment by Beowulf and, and continued work. And again, where we're getting to now is actually putting the meat on the bones, so to speak, of what those licenses actually can deliver. And so we're also at a tipping point in where it's much easier for me to be able to 
explain to the market what we believe the value of that business is. And we can do that by looking at comparable companies in the region who were also at the same stage of development at one point and saying, well, at that point in time, they were worth this and we have as good as they have. So I'm sorry I didn't answer your question because it's impossible. But, you know, there's, free, there's upside in both Fenniscandian and Vardar, which isn't in the Beowulf share price as far as I can see. Okay, and, and the, the buy, the, what you're sending to the investors now is we are not only Kallax, we are yes. also uh, Finland, we are also Kosovo. Yes, and I think there are exciting times for each of those business areas. Yeah. Okay. You, you, uh, you, in your six-month report uh, for, for January to June 2020, uh, there were at least a full page or more regarding uh, uh, discussion with uh, our, our minister, Ibrahim Bailan, <laughs> and, and uh, the application you have for, for, uh, for Sweden, for, for I don't know. Uh, so uh, I, I noticed your, your slide here uh, had July 2017. There must be a lot going on. And uh, is this frustrating? What can be done? What do you expect? Yes, it is frustrating, and uh, we have always said that our application is uh, comprehensive, and I stand behind that. Um, I am optimistic. I think that, uh, as I showed in the slides, that there isn't a better country for developing a project like Kalak than Sweden, because everything that Sweden has, a highly skilled workforce, uh, renewable power, infrastructure, the right mindset in terms of the things that matter, sustainable development, circular economy, fossil-free steelmaking. All these things are pushing in the right direction, innovation. Um, and so therefore I see Calac, as I explained, as a, an opportunity and a blueprint to showcase the best of what can be achieved in, de in developing a mine that is not only... With Calac, it's not about a mine. It's about the transformation of a municipality. It's about the business ecosystem that gets created by both the mine, the railroad, the port, the end users, both in Sweden and in Europe. So I think sometimes with uh, authorities, uh, especially with mining projects, they look at the mine, but it's not just about the mine. It's a much bigger picture. And, and there's a huge societal piece with Kalak. You know, Jokmok needs investment, it needs jobs. And so that's really quite exciting. Now, I'm just a humble mining engineer. I have my part to play, and what I describe is Calac is a cornerstone of a foundation that gets created by a whole group of people that collaborate and come together to partner, to develop what we see as a vision in 20, 2050, you know, maybe after Calac is completed, such that Yokmok looks very different to what it looks like now and in, in my view, has the opportunity to become a, a center of excellence or a cluster for sustainable development and circular economy. And I think that's, you know, that's something to aspire to. That's an exciting vision. So I'm hoping that that vision is shared by others. And so therefore, we get our permit and we get to move on. And especially the social democratic government yes. in Sweden. Yeah. Well, it's not just social democrats, is it? No. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, and, and in order to, to get this right as an investor, you also have to be really good at uh, uh, Bailan thinking then. No comment. <laughs> uh, uh, time flies. Anyone want a question to, to uh, be able? Uh, could you raise the holding in Varda by investing, say, a million pounds and you will end up with 70% ownership or... 46 at the moment. At, at yeah. the moment, yes. Yeah. But with, I mean, this needs more investment. Yeah. Someone has to pour in money. Yeah. You can do it. I think um, my job... And yeah. raise your share. Yes. My, my job as uh, CEO, uh, especially in the junior mining space, it's the English expression, one trick pony. So you just have your one project. And especially with something like Calac, the challenge was that if there's no news flow coming off Calac, what do you talk to the market about? 
you as an investor, if I can't tell you anything's happening with Calac, our main project, you sell Beowulf and buy another share. And so what we did is uh, we look at opportunities to build the capability of the company. We had the opportunity first to move into Finland with Fenner Scandinavian Resources. We built the team. We also got into Graphite, which the market looks very attractive at the moment. And uh, with Vardar as well, a cracking team with a really intelligent exploration idea. And we backed them. And, and yeah, it's, I guess... The, the early stage part is the difficult part to explain to the market what the real opportunity is. And as I said, now you're starting to get, especially with what we're doing now, doing the geophysics program, which has been happening while everywhere else, you know, has been struggling to actually make, uh, do exploration in the ground because of COVID-19. We've been able to get work done. So once we've got that work done, that really puts, uh, sets the scene for 2021 and targets for drilling. And yes, that will require more funding and we'll have that discussion with Vardar when the time comes. Thank you. Beer Wolf Mining. Thank, Thank you. you. Kurt Bodge.